Let's get ready for an emotional September. So there's a lot happening here right at the beginning of the month. And I shot a special video for you that I released early, which you can go and check out here that it talks about what's happening on September 1st and September 2nd. We'll touch on that a little bit today, but go and watch this more extended video to get more details about that. But we're going to dive into the major themes in the human design world for the month of September. Let's go ahead and dive in. So you can see from the image on the left here that has the highlighted gates that are going to be lit up by the sun and the earth over the course of the month of September. And you can see that there is a, uh, a grouping of them all around that emotional solar plexus. And then the image on the right hand side, you can see where they are in the human design mandala. And it's fun to see these because the earth and the sun are always opposite each other and they move around the mandala over the course of the year. So we'll dig into that a little bit more in a moment. But first, let's talk about the emotional solar plexus, because this is the center that's being highlighted during this month. So the emotional solar plexus is a uh, part of what was the a solar plexus chakra, which split into two. Uh, in, around the end of the 18th century. And it split into the spleen center, which is on the right hand side of the body and the emotional solar plexus, which is on the left hand side of the body. And I really see them as kind of right next to each other, not out here outside your body, the way that you see on a lot of the body graphs. They're really inside your body and, and right in that um, navel area, a little above your navel right in there. And this is really a power center for us. And so the spleen is more associated with our instinctual uh, awareness um, and the immune system and right timing and also intuition when it's in it's more awakened and empowered state. And then the emotional solar plexus is known as an emotional center. But what's more important about it and also more empowering and exciting is, is that it is the creativity center. It's been renamed this in quantum human design. And the reason that it is creativity center is, is that emotional energy is highly creative. And so that's really highlighted by the emotional solar plexus is, is that we create with this energy. Now, people who have this colored in in their chart will have an emotional wave. And so they do have a variability on their emotional energy. That's a little bit different than feelings. It has more to do with the, the tonality of the emotions that are running through them and the emotional energy that they have. And there may or may not be any content that goes with that at all. It's just a, just a wave that they have in terms of their emotional energy. Um, but for all of us, we can utilize the energy of that emotional solar plexus to create with when we get emotionally involved with whatever it is that we're wanting to bring into our lives. So well, what we know is, is that where we put our attention, right, which is where we put our energy is what's going to expand in our life. It's what we're going to have more of. So when we do that and we supercharge it with the emotional energy of the emotional solar plexus, we're able to become very magnetic to what it is that we are wanting to bring into our lives. So it's not just about our feelings. I'm happy. I'm sad. I'm disappointed. I'm curious. You know, all these kind of feelings that we have. It's more about the power of our emotional energy to help us to create. And it's the second most powerful engine in the human design chart. It's highly, highly powerful. And when we're doing our yoga, we're also really stimulating that solar plexus because we're building the power in the lower body and, and bringing it up into the uh, upper centers, which is where we can create our visionary reality. So all of that is to say, we are going to have a beautiful month coming up where we're going to have different gates of the emotional solar plexus that are highlighted. 
So in this image, and I encourage you to screenshot it if you want to, uh, to see what all the transits are going to be for the month of September. And uh, it's both the earth and the sun are moving through that emotional solar plexus, but it's primarily in the earth. And I want to show you this other image because this is back from September, from March in 2024. So they're actually just opposite each other in the calendar and opposite each other in the mandala. And here, if if you take a close look, you can see that March 1st through 6th, the sun is in the 63 and the earth is in the 64. Whereas here in September 3rd to 8th, the sun's in the 64 and the earth's in the 63. So they switch. And that's going to be true if you go down through all the different transits, right? And the reason for this is, like I said, is the, the sun and the earth move around the mandala over the course of the year, always opposite each other. So when you look at this image, that is the image of the mandala and the gates that are being highlighted, you can see that they are uh, almost the same gates, um, to only slightly different, um, but only because of where they, you know, they fall, but they're actually turning around the mandala. And um, on the, in the one in March, most of the gates in the emotional solar plexus were being lit up by the sun. Whereas if you look at the one for September, they're being lit up by the earth. So this is a kind of cool little factoid about um, how the human design transits work. And I thought that this was a great visual representation for you to get a sense of that. So in the outer planets, we don't have a ton of change. Um, we do have Uranus is going retrograde on September 1st, which I did talk about in that special video. So we have Uranus is going um, retrograde. It's still in the gate eight. It's still in the gate of contribution um, in uh, quantum human design. And um, and so it's right here on the throat. And Uranus is really wanting to wake us up to what are we contributing to. Uranus has just slowed down and stationed as going retrograde and it's going to be retrograde for a while in the eight and so we have this opportunity to go back and take a look at how have we been contributing and is there something we need to wake up to about our contribution is it time to end the old contribution that we've been doing is it time to start a new one um, or do we need to um, revolutionize the one uh, that we're in? Because planet, again, is that planet of awakening, of revolution, of rebellion, of sovereignty, of wanting to break up the old and really have us feel empowered around our own uh, revolutionary energy, our own evolutionary energy. So that's coming right here today on September 1st. Um, and we also have Pluto is moving back into uh, Capricorn uh, today, September 1st. And so uh, Pluto's retrograde, he's still in the gate 60, he's going to be in the gate 60 until the end of January of 2025. But we've got a really interesting go story going on with Pluto. Um, inside of the gate 60 going back and forth between uh, Capricorn and Aquarius. And like I said, go and watch that extra um, video that I did to get a little more details about that. I'll show you a couple of images in a second. Then we have Jupiter who is still in the gate 45 and it's going to be there through the beginning of December. And the gate 45 is the sovereign gate. It uh, was known as the king or queen gate um, or the monarch uh, in uh, traditional human design. It's been renamed distribution in quantum human design. And it's a beautiful, regal, benevolent, generous, caring, compassionate energy, that 45. It also in its shadow state can be authoritarianism, um, can be the dictator. So we want to watch out for that shadow state, which could be coming up and expanding while Jupiter is looking at it, especially when we've got Pluto going back and forth between Capricorn and Aquarius. We definitely have something supercharged kind of, kind of going on there in terms of leadership and power, what's happening inside of our major institutions. But for you personally in your life is to be looking at how can I be expanding my generosity, my benevolence, my regal nature, my ability to lead from the heart for the highest good of all. Then we have Saturn, who is retrograde um, and is in the gate 63. And it's going to be there again until the end of January. And so the gate 63 
is the beginning of the logic circuit. And we're going to circle back to that in a moment because the new transit that starts on September 3rd is going to be featuring the gate 63. So Saturn is there and Saturn is really asking us to take a look at how are we receiving and working with the insights and the possibilities and the new information that's coming into us through that left brain energy. And can we be open to it with curiosity or are we doubting it? And so we want to be looking at how are we experiencing and expressing that energy? And the invitation here is really to stay open in to curiosity and to be practicing that on a daily basis. Because one of the things Saturn really likes is when we're practicing something on a daily basis. And with Pluto moving back in to Capricorn, which is ruled by Saturn, and there's a whole... Um, Saturn Jupiter thing going on as well. You have to go to the astrologers for that. Um, but there's a lot going on for us around this Saturnian energy. And are we actually every day paying attention to our state of consciousness so that we can be open to new possibilities? And are we practicing that? Are we devoted to that? And then finally, we have Neptune, who is currently retrograde in the gate 25 until October 1st. So through the course of this month and the gate 25 is this beautiful love of spirit or simply spirit energy. And so Neptune, who is a, a spiritual theme for us in the quantum human design world, um, we want to be looking at, you know, what is our relationship to our spiritual life? And this is, you know, while Neptune is here and while it's retrograde, really putting a focus on our spiritual life. Life and what is our relationship to spirit? It's a really good time for you to be either starting or rejuvenating a spiritual practice that helps you feel really connected to the um, to the powers in non physical that are benevolent and generous and kind and are wanting to support us when we can open to that possibility. But if we're allowing that doubt to come in, so we have to remember that is if that doubt's coming in, it can really cut off our ability to have a beautiful spiritual uh, experience, right? And develop a, a, a potent and supportive spiritual practice. So we want to be continually kind of mm, letting the doubt go, moving into curiosity so that we can feel our relationship to spirit because that doubt at the beginning of the logic circuit can get translated into not believing in, for example, support coming from non-physical or believing in spirit or believing that the creative intelligence of the universe is here to support you, right? Doubt can really undermine you with that. So we have a lot that's going on that is pointing us to what it what is our state of consciousness? Are we in command of it? Are we operating just unconsciously inside of the larger cultural narratives or the ways that we've been conditioned? And you will see that there are four of these planets are retrograde. And so when the planet, especially these big outer planets go retrograde, right? They're, they're really asking us to take another look, slow down, pay attention. Have you gotten everything taken care of that was yours to be paying attention to in this particular gate with this particular um, quality of energy from this, this planet, this, this God of a, of a certain sort. Have we paid attention to all the different things? So Saturn is saying, hey, are we in curiosity or are we in doubt? Uranus is like, are we making the contribution that we came here to make? Are we just working out of some kind of rote way of doing that and subordinating ourselves to something that isn't really serving us? And Neptune is saying, how are you with your spiritual life? Do you feel connected to the spiritual realm, to the light realms? Do you have support from your guides that are coming in for you? How can you open to this and be more curious and let go of the doubt around that? And then Pluto, bless Pluto, <laughs> retrograding in the 60s, has gone back into Capricorn. And we're really looking at what are we shedding from the uh, from the old order. So Pluto's been there since 2008, which is what, 16 years now. And so Pluto has been moving through Capricorn, kind of really kind of helping us to let go and to shed what of the old order, what was corrupt, what didn't work, 
what was not in the highest good of, of all, right? And now we're, we're emerging into this time of Aquarius, but not before one last look over these next 10 weeks of Pluto being in that Capricornian energy. And so we may be seeing uh, a more uh, uh, of the old order pushing back right so don't be surprised if you see that it's not um that it's going to stay because Pluto is going to continue. It's going to move into Aquarius and it's going to be there um, for uh, over 20 years till, till um, uh, 2045. I think that's right. And so we have um, a lot of time that we're going to be in this, this Aquarian energy. So just take a look at this image for a moment and you can see it's an interesting piece that I want to comment on here a little differently than I did in the video that I, the, the special report that I did, which is to talk about this gate 60, because it's fascinating to me the way that the gate 60 actually straddles the sign of Capricorn and the sign of Aquarius. And so inside of this one gate, we're getting these different energies, some that are more conservative, that are more structural, that is more disciplinary, um, and so on. And then some that are more Aquarian, which are more community based, more freedom based, more expression based, more of the new based. And all of that is contained inside of this one channel, this one um, gate of the gate 60. And it's it's a great example of what's happening inside of this knowing circuit, because the knowing circuit, right, is all about the new. The knowing circuit is all about bringing in breakthrough ideas, leading edge ideas, new possibilities. Um, it's where that evolutionary impulse of humanity runs through the chart is in the knowing circuit. And so this gate 60 is in the knowing circuit. And it's the place that is discerning what of the past do we want to carry forward? What do we want to leave behind us? And also what of the new mutations that have gotten created? What of the new changes? What are the new progressions do we want to carry forward? And what do we want to let go? Because just because something is new doesn't mean that it's something we want to carry forward. Doesn't mean that it's, that it's actually going to be supportive for us. So that whole process is, is right here in Pluto's journey in the gate 60. And just putting these two side by side, you can really see that so much is happening here on September 1st, right? Because um, uh, uh, Pluto is going to retrograde back into Capricorn and Uranus retrogrades um, uh, in the gate eight. And um, and so we really are having a lot of pressure here between Pluto and Uranus that are happening here on September 1st. So take good care of yourself before you get ready for the new moon in Virgo that's going to happen tomorrow on September 2nd. So again, I talked about this in that special um, uh, report that I did. I just want to say here that at this point, we're having the um, moon is um, reaching out to the earth and they're both meeting here in the gate 40. And the they are giving us extra energy for what it is that we want to be creating for ourselves as we're moving forward into this next moon cycle. And the gate 40 really calls us in some ways to to kind of pull back from some of the ways that maybe we've been engaging to take another look to pause and to uh, really do some self-care to restore to make sure that we're in a really good shape for engaging with life and uh, you want to be looking at that as kind of the seeds for yourself because you know the fall tends to get really busy right we we go back to school we come back from the summer we start getting engaged in things again and so we do have this energy of new beginnings that happens kind of ironically here in the fall and the virgo new moon is a great time to kind of get a hold of that and part of the message here is is even as you're doing that make sure that you you are taking time to really support yourself, to care for yourself and make sure that you are um, getting enough rest and getting enough time with doing the things that that really support you. 
And then later in the month, um, either on the 17th or on the 18th, depending on where you are in the world, for me, it's on the 17th, we have a super full moon uh, that's happening in Pisces. I will dig into this more when we get later into the month um, and we're getting closer to the state. Uh, but I want to just mention it here because it's also a partial lunar eclipse. So we're starting to move uh, a little bit more into eclipse season. We're going to have one this month. We'll have one um, the, the following month. They always come in pairs, sometimes in threes. I just learned I always thought they were pairs, but they sometimes come in threes. So this is the first um, of the two that are going to be happening here. And, um, and so this is something that, you know, as we get farther into the month, you will want to pay a little bit more attention. The gate 36 is um, a little bit of a challenging uh, gate. It is in the sensing circuit. And it, it's an energy for really wanting to engage with life, for, for to have the energy for engaging, but it can get a little bit jaded. It can get a little bit like, mm, I've kind of done everything, you know, I don't know what there is fun, fun to do anymore. Or it can have the spirit of adventure, right? Adventure and being able to really release um, the uh, unhelpful energies of the past and step forward into uh, a, a state of, of curiosity. It's a little bit of a theme for us, right? That curiosity and to step forward into the next adventure. And then finally, the next new transit of the sun and the earth is going to start on Tuesday, September third. And so I thought I would go ahead and share about that with you here today since it's coming up so soon. So um, on the third, the sun is going to move into the gate 64 and the earth is going to move into the gate 63. And you can see here, these are both on the head center and the head center, even though it shows you the picture in the body graph of like being in the head, it's actually up here. It's more like the crown chakra. It's up on top of the head. And so we've got the beginning of the logic circuit, which is the 63 where the earth is and we've got the beginning of the sen sensing circuit, which is right brained energy, which is the 64. Now, both of these are in collective circuitry. Collective circuitry is one of the three main circuits. And you can see here that the um, energy comes in through that head. It actually crosses over in the Ajna, goes on the opposite side of the body, and then comes back up through the route, crosses again, and comes up through that central channel. That's why I wanted to show you the picture of the logic circuit and the sensing circuit so you can actually see that there is this interesting kind of crossover that's happening here. And so these are the different um, circuits that are being highlighted by the sun and the earth um, during this transit. And sometimes we can get some mm, conflictual energy that's happening between this left brain energy and this right brain energy. Typically what that is, is we get our left brain energy um, kind of dismisses the right brain energy because our culturally that left brain energy, the logic, the analysis, the strategy, um, the planning, uh, the counting, the categorizing, all of that is how, you know, you generally in culture, we value that. We say, yeah, that that's a valid way of knowing things. Whereas the right brain, which is creative and experiential and embodied and expansive, mm, not so much, right? Sometimes I, um, certain situations, certain people, certain um, times of our lives, maybe, but generally speaking, that right brain no way of knowing is not as well accepted in culture, although I am happy to say I think this is changing. So sometimes that logic tends to dismiss the sensing. But you also want to look out for if you tend to like if you're in a really embodied state, you're you're having a wonderful experience. And if you just kind of go, oh, don't be so logical. <laughs> don't be so linear, right? So we don't we also don't want to dismiss logic because we actually need both ways of knowing. And that's what the sun and the earth are bringing to us now. So the earth is in the gate 63. And like I said, that's the that beginning of that um, that logic circuit. And we did see that Saturn is also in the 63. So we talked about that a little bit earlier. And the main message here is ground yourself in a state of awe and a state of curiosity as much as you possibly can. And that will give you a beautiful ground to be able to be receiving the downloads that are coming in through the gate 
state 64. Um, because when we ground ourselves in this sense of possibility and curiosity, then we can really shine out that light of what's coming in through that 64. Now in traditional human design, the, um, uh, the 64 is known as confusion, which I think has to do with the idea that it might be different than what we're used to, right? Because again, it's not what's coming in through the logic circuit. And so I love the way this has been renamed as divine transference, because divine transference is how we're actually receiving. It's actually this side, we're receiving in through that right brain, some really different ways of perceiving our world. And this is where intuition comes in. It's our creativity. Um, there's a lot of benefit that we get here. So you can see though, that both of these um, uh, gates are lit up and actually the um, they're not good. The channels aren't going to stay lit up for, for much longer because the, their, their mates are going to be moving along soon. But we do have a little bit of a time here where we have the the head and the ajna defined just a couple of days so you might be um having a a, a kind of defined a head kind of defined ajna experience just make sure that you don't allow yourself to go into pig-headedness which can happen with defined ajna energy and um uh, assert to others that about things that you're certain of that they don't necessarily agree with gotta watch out for that one <laughs> And then I do want to let you know about something very special that I am doing for the next 10 days. And that has to do with my uh, Sovereign Sisterhood, which is now open. And we have a beautiful group of women who are already here and already um, gathering. And there's more who are coming all the time. And you're warmly invited to come. And the special thing I'm doing just for the next 10 days is, is that I am giving as a bonus my Activate Your Superpowers Understanding Human Design course when you join the Sovereign Sisterhood over the next 10 days. This is a course that has um, 11 different um, lessons. I have expanded it with a bunch of my YouTube videos as well. And they uh, it goes through all of the different fundamentals of human design and it gives you a deep dive into each one of those and then what we're going to do in the sovereign sisterhood is we're actually going to cycle through all of those themes over the course of the next year so that you're going to have that major content right at, when you um, when you come on in and you join but then you're also going to be able to be visiting that that information all throughout the year while we're looking at these major themes so for the month of September for example, we're looking at type and strategy and how we're designed to dance and co-create with the flow of life, which is also the pillar number one of feminine sovereignty. And I do talk about type and strategy in pillar number one of feminine sovereignty. So we are put really putting together feminine sovereignty and human design in the sovereign sisterhood. And uh, we do have a um, live session every week. We also, they're all recorded because we have a global community. People are coming in from um, different parts of the world. So we are working with our time zones, but everything's recorded. All the information is there for you. And there's lots of conversation that we're doing in between sessions as well to support each other, acknowledge each other, witness each other um, and support each other while we're going through um, what we're learning and uh, what we're exploring in our lives. So if you'd like to work more with me, but probably even more importantly, get deeper into your human design uh, experience and then also build um, rapport with and camaraderie with a, a, a group of sovereign beings who are also on our evolutionary path of awakening. So I warmly invite you to come and participate if you like to, and you get the first week for free. You get to come and check out what the Sovereign Sisterhood is. And then when you decide to stay, then you um, will get the Activate Your Superpowers class as a bonus. All right. I've never done anything like that before. I sort of can't believe that I'm doing it, but I am. So take advantage over the next 10 days. Okay. Many blessings. Much love. Bye for now.